Hey, what's up? It's Nash and welcome to today's training where we're talking about the content creator growth trajectory and how you can go from being a freelance photographer that's making anywhere from like four to six K a month and scale your business to 20K a month plus while getting paid more to work less and only working on jobs that are actually exciting for you. So I'm gonna break this video down into two different sections. Uh, the first one is kind of pointing out what gets people stuck in this range to begin with. And to be honest, a lot of people are stuck here for mostly the same reasons. And it's very difficult to get out if you don't know uh, what you're missing. So my goal is to kind of show you what you're missing um, and what the people over here are doing that you are probably not doing if you're in this range. And ultimately how to help you get up to this range because that's what I do. I help content creators grow and scale their business to 20,000 a month. Um, and that's what we're here for. So as you will see, this curve here or this growth trajectory is not linear. It's it's exponential. It's like this, right? And there, there's a reason for that. So if you're between the beginner stage or the freelance stage, you've likely experienced this yourself, that this growth is super slow. It, it, it honestly could take years. For me, it took like two or three years just because there's so much stuff that you have to learn and kind of sift through the garbage and, and all that kind of stuff. So this can be really, really slow. But assuming that you're at this level, this can actually be pretty quick. This going from like the four to 6K to like 20K plus per month uh, can actually be pretty fast in as little as 90 days, sometimes even fist faster than that, just depending on kind of your offer and your clients and stuff. Um, but I'm gonna show you how to do exactly that. So I'm gonna go ahead and break down all three of these and kind of the things to watch out for and what to do to get to here. So we'll start at beginner. And when I define beginner, that doesn't necessarily mean you just picked up a camera yesterday. This is more so in your maturity level in, in terms of the business aspect. So as you can see, between zero to 3,000 a month. So there's people that have been shooting for six years that are still in this beginner stage. And I'm gonna kind of define what that is right here. But just to clarify, if you are a beginner, this video is probably not for you. You should actually probably check out the video called uh, How to Build Your Content Business in 2023, something like that. I'll link it on this video so you can check it out. Also, if you're in this range, I would say check it out too, because it's really helpful. And it'll, it'll help you with all of these common pitfalls here. Um, but regardless, I'm just gonna talk about it a little bit. So if you're a beginner, you're likely uh, pretty lost and confused. You don't have a roadmap. You don't have any examples. You don't have much of a network to go off of, of what to even do. You don't have much of a portfolio, especially for the type of work you want to do. Maybe you have some just random stuff, but it's not really relevant to what you're actually trying to do. You're probably scared of rejection. Um, which makes it difficult for you to reach out. You're probably afraid to invest in yourself, both in the gear aspect, but also in the the aspect of just learning things because you might be in that YouTube rabbit hole and just trying to find everything on YouTube. Um, I know because I've been there, I get it. It's, it's like a death scroll of trying to find it. You probably care too much about gear. You're just watching gear reviews or pixel peeping or comparing this drone to the other. And you might even think that the quality of gigs that you get is dependent on your gear which to an extent kind of, but um, that's that's really not the main thing to, to focus on. Probably bad at sales. You probably either haven't jumped on a sales call ever um, or you have been doing it all through just emails and DMs. You don't really know what you're doing. You don't have a plan. And then lastly, you're blaming external factors like a low social following, lack of experience, lack of time, all that kind of stuff. So if you're a beginner, again, go ahead and watch that other video because that'll be more helpful for you. My thought is that most people watching this video is probably going to be in this range, which is the freelancer range, meaning you're making anywhere between four to 6,000 a month. Um, and there's a few defining characteristics of this. First of all, you have great portfolio and great work. Okay. So you've worked with clients before. You have an awesome portfolio. Um, and overall, you're just a great content creator. Okay. So that's, that's usually this person. And then they'll be in two different boats typically. Okay. It'll be, either be a situation where you have like four to six low ticket clients. So I'd define that as maybe less than a thousand dollars a month per client. Um, or you could have one to two high ticket clients and those high ticket, or it's actually a low high ticket client. So that would be like two to 3000 a month. And you only have like one to two of those. So again, you're kind of like struggling to find more of those types of clients or even to charge more uh, than that 3000 mark. So there's a few problems with each of these. Number one, uh, this first part here, where you have more clients that you're charging less, likely you're at a stage where you're probably like offering them the world, you're giving them tons of deliverables, you feel like you're wasting, or not wasting, but spending tons of time on each of these clients, and you feel like you can't really get to a point where you can charge them more. And it's, it's kind of frustrating because you feel like you're on that hamster wheel of like, I feel like I'm doing a ton of work, but they're not really paying me at the level that I wanna be paid. So it's kind of frustrating and, and you end up working a lot. 
Um, the other option is this, where you only have like one to two of those low high ticket offers or low high ticket uh, clients. And that's awesome. And these might even be the projects that you actually want to do that you're passionate about. But the problem is you only got like one of them and it's sporadic and it's not predictable. So you end up having to fill the other time with this kind of stuff, with the low ticket offers or with just stuff you don't really care about just so you can pay the bills. So you got like maybe one project you're stoked about and then the rest of them, you're like, oh, I got to do this just so I can pay the bills. And that's kind of the problem with both of these. Um, so ultimately, it just leads to you being overworked and underpaid totally. Um, you are afraid to charge more because you might fear that you lo will lose a client. So I know I've personally experienced that in the past where, like, say, for example, you're charging a thousand bucks to six of these clients. So you're like, OK, cool. I'm making six grand a month. That's like decent money. It's more than my friends. That's, you know, that's that's a decent living, right? Um, but the problem is you're getting overworked and underpaid and you're like, I can't really charge these clients more because I feel like if I try to charge them more, number one, I don't know what I would even offer for more and I can't just spike the price for no reason. Um, but number two, they might not even want to pay me more or be comfortable with paying me more. So they might just ditch me. And then all of a sudden, instead of having six, now I have five and then I have to start from square one and find another client and charge them the same amount. So it's, it's kind of like this rotating hamster wheel kind of deal. But then the other problem is that when you potentially take on another client, you don't have the confidence to charge that higher amount because all of your other clients have been here and you don't see the value enough in your product. So you end up charging your new client a thousand bucks again, or you charge them two grand as opposed to, uh, you know, a higher price than that, just because you don't have the confidence and you don't have the, um, the examples, I guess, of people charging those higher prices and how to actually go about it. Um, so all this to say, it leads to you having no control, which means that you need to take on every job that comes after you. So even if a client lowballs you, if they want a discount, if it's not a project that you really like or excited about, you still don't have the control to take on the project that you want to take on because you just, you have to pay the bills, right? So these people are typically better at sales. Usually they'll have uh, some sales experience in terms of jumping on a call or at the very least closing clients over email. Um, and then this this is kind of uh, subjective to the person, but I know for me personally, I was wasting a ton of time posting on social media because I had this perception that the more content I posted, the more often I posted, the more consistent I was, just the more clients would see me and potentially reach out, which is true to an extent, but it takes freaking forever. And I, I honestly don't recommend it. <laughs> uh, if you're trying to use that as a primary way to get business, I don't recommend it. So ultimately, all this stuff leads to you being burnt out because it's inconsistent and you don't have a predictable system for getting those new clients. Because guess what? If you don't get another client next month, then you're out of business and you got to go get a nine to five or you got to go do something that you don't want to do. So what happens is you end up just spending all your time, you know, trying to get these guys here and you don't have any time or money or effort to reinvest into your business to actually grow. So that's why it's a hamster wheel. That's why you continue to just stay in this realm because you don't have the time and the, the opportunity and the, the finances to be able to reinvest and to actually get to that next level. And that's really um, some of the defining difference between this guy and this guy right here. So what does it take to get to this level? Um, because it's really not different in terms of like this guy has great portfolio, so does this guy. And to be honest, sometimes I was in this stage and I found myself where I would see guys that were at this stage and I'm like, dude, their content isn't even as good as mine. Like mine's better quality. I've worked with better clients. Um, it gets better engagement, whatever, all these different stats, but they're making like five times more than I was. And there's got to be a reason for that. And I didn't know what it was here. And that's ultimately this right here is the difference between this guy and this guy. So I'm going to break it down. So these guys, again, have great portfolio, great work, and they're landing anywhere between two to four high ticket clients per month. And let me just kind of put a caveat there. Sometimes it's only one. Like there's been times where I'll land one client for like 40 grand and I'm just solid for the next month or two. And I just like don't do any more reach out. Um, so that's 100% possible. Um, but typically these guys aren't going to take on a project that is anything less than three and a half thousand. If it's anything less than that, they just don't even touch it. Like I'll get messages coming in, like inbound leads or whatever, and their budget is 1500 bucks, and I just won't even respond. Like it's, it's not even worth it. So that's that's kind of the uh, opportunity that you have when you're at this level to, to kind of pick and choose who you actually want to work with. Um, so they're also confident in what they charge. 
because they understand the value of what they have to offer. And I'm going to go deep into what this value is and how to actually determine what that is for yourself and how to position it as value. But one of the key things that differentiates this guy from this guy is this, the confidence in what they're charging. Because this guy isn't confident to charge any more than a thousand bucks or maybe two to three on the high end because they don't understand the value that they're offering the client. So they think if they charge 10 grand for the same thing, the client's just going to say no because they don't think that they're worthy of being able to charge that amount. Whereas these guys are confident in being able to charge that because they understand the value that they're bringing to the client. So how do you get to that level of confidence? Well, it's because you have a targeted message and you have a targeted offer to a specific client. So let me just break it down like this. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Typically, these guys here, they're going to be sending messages only when they need to. Um, you know, when the, the, the jobs are drying up or whatever, they'll be like, oh, crap, I need to send more messages. So let's just say that they're subscribing to the general consensus of a lot of these gurus that say, you know, send out 50 emails or 50 DMs a day. Okay, so these guys are sending out 50. The problem is because they use a script that everyone else is using, it doesn't really convert that well. So of those 50 messages that they send, they might only get 10 at max that are positive responses. And I'm not talking positive responses in terms of people being interested. I'm talking positive responses of people being interested, but also having a budget and being willing to pay. So this, this might even be high um, if you don't know how to portray your value. But let's just say, for example, sake, they get 10, okay? Of those 10, they might get three of those people on a call. And of those three people on a call, because they don't understand the value, they might close one of them for a low ticket offer, but most likely they're not going to close any. But let's just say, to be optimistic, let's just say they close one out of those 50 for a low ticket, like $1,000 offer. That's kind of the game here. So you, it, it takes a long time to do, right? Whereas these guys, they might send out, let's say 10, They'll send 10 messages, but because they're so targeted and their offer is so targeted to that specific client, they might get five of them to respond, okay? And then three of those people on a call. So it's the same amount of people on a call, but they'll probably close one to two because it's so specific. Whereas this guy is zero, maybe one. These guys are one to two, like almost guaranteed. But the thing is, here's the kicker. This takes five times longer, okay? Five times longer than this one because you're sending five times as many messages is way less efficient and you can charge way less because it's not targeted. So I call this precision prospecting personally. And that's really what one of the main differentiators between this freelance guy and the business owner guy is, is understanding how to precision target your ideal client and hit them with the right message at the right time so that they'll be willing to part with their budget to pay you. Um, and ultimately it comes down to this is that you're positioning yourself as a marketing partner. So you're not just a freelancer, you're not just a guy that goes out there and creates content, but you're actually a marketing partner. So what do I mean by that? Well, it's not necessarily that you run ads for the client, although you can do that if you do have experience, but the marketing partner is more so you become a, car a content partner with them where you're not just creating content, but you're actually strategizing of how this content is gonna work for them in the real world. So what happens is these guys, if you're, if you're at this stage, you're probably pitching yourself. You're probably pitching content. You're saying, hey, I can do 20 videos for you or I can do you know, 15 photos and you just leave it at that. You don't care what the heck they do with it. They don't care what kind of results the client gets. You're just like, hey, I'll just you know, do this content for you. Have fun, see what happens, great. Whereas these guys over here, okay? They're, yes, they're shooting the same content. Their content's the same quality, but they're including the strategy aspect of it so that the brand can then rely on you as a marketing partner, not just like another Instagram photographer or just photographer in general, but as somebody who can actually grow their business because you have a strategy and you have a plan to do that. And somebody who grows business, they call them in the business world, they call them brain makers, okay? Because they make the business money. And when you can make a business money, you can charge way more than this for a single project. Like I said, I've charged up to $40,000 for a single project before um, because I became a marketing partner and I showed them how to use that content for themselves so they could get results. So this is great for two different reasons. Number one, if you get great client results and you help them get those results, um, they're going to be happy and you're going to get a better testimonial out of them, better case study that you can then use to go get more clients, right? That's number one. But number two is because they get such great results, 
they're going to want to work with you almost exclusively because you got them those results that they hadn't gotten before with this guy. So these guys become irrelevant. They don't want to work with these guys anymore because they don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to get results. They just take pictures, right? Whereas this guy knows how to get the results for the client, knows how to not only take content, but actually get the business result that they want. So all of a sudden, this guy is way more appealing, even though he's a lot more money, but he gets way better results than this guy. And that's all it takes to be able to, uh, you know, this precision prospecting is what it takes in order to be able to scale to here. And that's why it's, it's really just a simple shift um, and it doesn't take that long to do. But ultimately what this allows you to do is allows you to invest into scaling your business and scaling it into a predictable acquisition system. Meaning that if you need to hire appointment setters or closers to take on sales calls for you or an editing team or a, a, a shooting team or other freelancers, you can do it because you have the budget to be able to because your margins are so much higher than these guys because you're able to charge a lot more for it. So you can scale a lot faster and then you can also be in control of the jobs that you want to take and you can outsource the rest of them. So say a, a sick hotel job comes in and you just want to do it. Great, awesome. Shoot it, edit it, whatever you want. But if you get a job come in that you don't want to do and but you're like, ah, but the budget's there, you can always outsource it because you have the budget available to go uh, hire somebody else to do it for you while you still make money off of the job. So you're totally in control of the jobs that you take, um, which leads to you having happier clients because you're working on projects that you like. You're also giving them strategies so that they can get the results that they want to get. And you're happier because you're getting paid more to work less and only on the jobs that are actually exciting for you. So that's essentially how this works. And that's what I do. I help people go from here to here. So if that's interesting for you, go ahead and uh, check the link below, book in a call. And uh, I'd love to chat with you of, of how you get from this place to this place. But honestly, it's only if you're serious. If uh, if you're just kind of sitting around just like, oh, I, you know, I don't know if I want to, uh, you know, invest. I don't know if uh, I want to learn sales. I don't have enough following, whatever the case. If you have a bunch of excuses, you just don't book the call. Save yourself some time, save me some time as well. But if you're serious, then go ahead and book a call and I'll show you how to do this. Um, now, the thing is, could you stay here? Okay. Could you stay in this freelancer aspect, making four to six K a month and eventually sometime grow to this level doing some of the same stuff? You probably could. Well, it, it would take a very, very long time because you would have to increase this. And so not only are you spending 50, now you'd probably have to increase that to a hundred and that would have to be every single day. Okay. So you'd spend whatever that is, probably four hours doing that. And then you'd have to take on more shoots. You'd have to take on more clients. You'd have to edit more and you still are just charging this amount. So you aren't able to really have the profit margins that you want to be able to reinvest. And again, it's a hamster wheel. So yes, you might be making more, but you have no freedom and you're working more and basically slaving away more than you even were before. So at that point, it's almost better just to get a job because, uh, you know, you'll work eight hours and you might make about the same amount. Plus, you're not even passionate about what you do because you have to take on every job that, that comes your way. So that's why I think it's so much faster and so much better to do it this way and to use precision prospecting where you're just hitting the exact client with the exact message at the right time and you're becoming that marketing partner for them that's actually a rainmaker that actually makes their business money. And you position yourself as somebody who's actually valuable that uh, essentially make these people irrelevant. And uh, and that's ultimately what you want to do. So again, if you want to uh, ditch the freelance life, if you want to actually own a business, if you don't want to have to think about what the next job is next month and like, are you going to have to go back and get a nine to five? If, if you don't want to have to worry about that stuff, then uh, go ahead and book in a call with me below. I cannot wait to chat with you and, uh, and to help you grow to this level. Um, but other than that, hopefully this video was super helpful for you. If so, go ahead and give it a like because this video will uh, get more reach for other content creators like you. They're stuck in this grind. Uh, we're trying to get as many people out of that grind as we possibly can. So uh, that would help me a lot as well as subscribe to the channel because I post videos like this all the time. Um, actually, this is my first whiteboard style video. So if you like this video, let me know. Uh, I can do more of this style. Usually I do just like the talking head stuff. But if you like this, I can do more. Um, but uh, yeah, just let me know in the comments below. Or if you want to, shoot me a DM at Nash Hagen and uh, we can chat over there. But uh, I cannot wait to see you in the next video. Peace.